Hi, I'm Claire McIntosh and I'd love to read you a couple of pages from my latest novel, After the End. Layla looks around the courtroom. Only the handful of press given permission to attend are moving, their pens making swift marks in shorthand, recording every word the judge speaks. Everyone else is quite still, watching, waiting, and Layla has the strange sensation of being frozen in time, that they might all wake a year from now and they will still be here in this courtroom, waiting for the ruling that will change so many lives. There has been much speculation about this case, the judge says, and I would ask that those who have not listened, as we have, to the medical evidence pertaining to Dylan Adams, do not pass judgment on the decisions made in this room. There is a long pause before he speaks again. And when he does, he looks directly at Pip and Max. Many people believe that the courts should have no role to play in this process, that parents should be allowed to decide what is right for their child. However, when agreement cannot be reached, either between hospital and parent, or indeed between parents themselves, the court must step in. Layla swallows. If it is this hard for her, how impossible must it be for Dylan's parents? To listen to the judge's words, to know that in a few moments they will hear their son's fate. Before the break, Max and Pip Adams were sitting at opposite ends of the long bench seat behind their legal teams. They're still sitting on the bench, but the distance between them has contracted and now they're sitting close enough to touch each other. In fact, as Layla watches and as the judge draws closer to his ruling, she sees movement. She couldn't say if Max moved first or Pip, she can't be certain they even know they're doing it. But as she watches, two hands venture slowly across the no man's land between them and find each other. Dylan's parents hold hands. The judge speaks and a courtroom holds its breath. Thank you.